and how do you in introduce somebody to what Embark is when they're not familiar at all? Oh my gosh. So that has definitely evolved for me through the years because I used to be scared to talk about what we mm. do because it's so unusual. And I didn't want people that are mainstream school people to, to be offended or angry about what we do because it's mm. different than traditional school. And sometimes people can get defensive about something like that. So when we first were doing our messaging, we really leaned into we're an alternative to school. We're not school, mm -hmm. right? And then we sort of leaned into the self-directed education part. But what we have found is that truly we are a democratic organization. We are a youth rights organization. So now yeah. I feel so brave and so bold that I can say, yeah, we're a youth run democracy. The, the, they run it with us. Everything from cleaning toilets to the budget and board meetings. And if they want to do fundraising, everything is consent based. There's nothing that isn't. And it, and we use restorative practices and nonviolent communication. It is so different than traditional schooling. And what I said to you earlier is one of the other things that we say a lot, you can get the academics. It is a different world now. We don't have to be Renaissance people anymore. We mm. really can do that deep dive into that thing that we're super passionate about and super excited about. And if you want to go to college, now colleges are starting to look for that in applications. Right. So I've been doing a lot of you know, college admissions webinars mm. and things like that. And that's what they're saying. They're saying, we want to see people that really focus on something because you don't need to know everything. You can access everything, but you need to know what's real and what's not real. And you need to be mm -hmm. a, a problem solving kind of thinker and a creative thinker. And that's what, you know, we do that's, that's different and it's natural. It's not in any way artificial or forced. Right, right. It's just part of being in our space. Right. Yeah. It's like uh, the contrast, like for me, I was very traditionally schooled. Uh, in fact, going to a a, uh, a magnet program, so college prep, you know, being bused to another school. But, you know, I was the president of a club and my friend was the president of his club and he was the vice president of my club and I was the vice president of his club. And <laughs> what does that really mean? You know, <laughs> it, it was, you know, jumping through the hoops kind of stuff. Uh, but it was all about you got to have a few things to put on that college application and, and it worked. Uh, <laughs> I got into an elite school, so. There you go. <laughs> um, but we've also had people um, get into an elite school without all those things. Exactly. Too. Yeah. Exactly. You know, um, and so um, we recently had somebody where she applied to Georgetown and um, they wanted her SAT scores and she had never taken the SATs. And she, so we're here for you to, to support you even after you've graduated, right? So she mm -hmm. calls us up and she says, oh, can I have a mentor meeting? Can I talk to you about this? And, and so her big dilemma was, I don't want to take the SATs because I think it's inequitable and I have some ethical issues with the SATs. And she had also done community college and gotten her associate's mm. degree. So she was like, oh. I'm already demonstrating that I am college ready. So I don't see the point of taking the SATs. So one of the things that we talk about with how we run Embark and what I said with, you know, our conflict resolution is what are your choices, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we said to her is, well, if you choose this, what will then, what are one of the possible consequences? And she said that they will just reject my application. And we were like, yeah, is that something that you're willing to risk? And she said, absolutely. And so she, she sent them a whole, you know, letter about what, what her reasons were. And they still they still accepted her without her SATs. Nice. So, nice. yeah. So and and that's the other thing we and not everybody has to go to college. I mean, and it is totally fine. And there's so many wonderful things you can do in the world. And that's that's a big fear that we find in our area of the country. And I, there's probably probably every area of the country for parents like, oh, my gosh, you know, what if they're not successful? And the only way they can be successful is to go to college. And you still can. Right. You really, really can. Yeah. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic? is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.